Hi. This is my first back time back at an IDC user forum in quite a while, and it's fun to see all the same faces. <laughs> I missed you guys. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about not just our scientific competing curriculum, but all of the different um, ways that we're addressing education and workforce development at TAC. Um, we have really started looking at how you start kids on lifelong learning in high performance computing. So we have K-12 programs now in the summer, which I'll, I'll skip, but if you want to know more about them, please um, come ask me. Um, and then some funded undergraduate programs in addition to teaching courses in the university, uh, and then some graduate and, and sort of adult uh, workforce programs, uh, and our new upcoming institute series, which I will tell you more about later. Um, in undergraduate programs, we do have funded REU grants um, through NSF. So we had 10 students this year who were majoring somewhere in science and engineering disciplines, the majority of them from underrepresented minorities, some of them absolutely just the most brilliant kids um, who have come from some really interesting and really hard to, to imagine kind of backgrounds. Um, two of them actually ended up going to the um, White House when they did the one-year anniversary of the NSCI a couple weeks ago um, and to go and be part of that and see how what they're being educated in is going to affect the world. Um, and then we also have funded um, internships from our STAR, our um, industry partners programs. So some of our industry partners are um, looking for, as you may imagine, um, in grad, undergrads and grad students who actually know how to use a supercomputer um, so they don't have to retrain them when they get there. And so um, we do that. We have, uh, with a little bit of funding from our partners, and we've gotten some money from um, people in this room, BP and Shell and NASA, um, we have uh, partnered the student with a person at TAC who already has a project that they, that they need support on and can submit, um, can monitor and mentor the students and teach them how to do things so they've learned parallel computing. Um, just ask Keith Gray about the interns we had for BP. They were very cool kids. Um, and one of them actually got to go work at BP. So um, the students submit papers or posters on their work. Uh, the partners get to see what their resumes look like so they could then hire them if they wanted to. Uh, and this is actually a picture of me and Ritu Aurora, who's one of the advisors for the students, and Madhav, her student, who wrote a paper and did a poster on interactive on an interactive parallelization tool that he wrote. Uh, and there's actually a YouTube video so you can watch how it works. Um, but it will semi-automatically generate parallel programs, so it's a, it's a kind of a neat idea for him to get into. Uh, and then her new student, whose name I did not put on here, uh, just got a paper accepted to SC16 with her for semi-automatic application level checkpointing. So she's got the students really deep into the programming of HPC and how to do it, uh, and they're being recognized for that outside of TAC, which is nice. Um, and then um, Shell was funding some work on tax stats, which is one of the pieces of software that we wrote in-house that takes the statistics on everything that's running on all of our systems all the time. Uh, and so, as you might imagine, generates a great deal of data. Um, and so we need a way to look at that data other than just, you know, spreadsheets. So we're looking at different databases um, and maybe visualization of how the the processors are being used, how often, what kind of jobs, all that kind of stuff. And so the students are doing that as well. Um, we do teach courses in advanced computing in the university. It's been about 10 years now. Originally, we were in the uh, Division of Statistics and Scientific Computing. The, um, I, I called it the, the bastard stepchildren because the mathematics department didn't really want statistics and the computer science department didn't want scientific computing, so we kind of went off on our own. Um, and then we became a division because it became a thing that everybody wanted to be a part of. Uh, and so there are five courses that you, could, that you can take from TAC staff as instructors. Uh, we started teaching actually the third one on the list, a parallel computing course, uh, and then sort of had to back up and talk about what scientific and technical computing was, and then sort of had to back up again and teach Fortran and C because nobody else in the university is teaching it. And so, yes, we still teach Fortran and C to grads and undergrads at UT, and it is full every semester every semester um, because they need to learn it because a PI will send their graduate student to go take this class and it's a three credit course and it's taught by tax staff uh, and so um, we have been you know very successful with that we've taught visualization and data analysis um, alternating with 
uh, the parallel computing course or the distributed, distributed and grid computing course. And that um, had mostly GPUs in it originally um, and uh, the Viz course and we're adding, we'll add some Xeon Phi in there and do another course on analytics and on accelerators. Um, so and from funding that uh, was granted to us by Chevron a couple years ago, all of the course materials are actually available and they're done in modules so anybody at any other institution um, can take the modules from these courses and roll them into their own classes. You don't actually have to find a teacher to teach the whole thing if you don't want to. If you're a professor and you need a piece of this, you can take it. Uh, and so that seems to work as well. We're doing a lot of topic focused training um, in advanced computing. Oh, let me back up actually. Before I go past this, um, you can take 18, if you take 18 credit hours uh, in the Department of Statistics and Data Science, you can come out as an undergraduate with a certificate in scientific computing, which is UT's answer to a minor, basically. Uh, and if you are a grad student, you can actually take 12 hours and come out of it as part of your grad portfolio that you are now an expert, or at least a approved by UT expert uh, in computational science. So we've had a couple kids go all the way through this and get the certificate now, um, which has only been around for, for a couple of years. So it takes at least a couple of years to get all the courses, uh, and the kids have now started getting that certificate. Um, okay, next one. Um, we're doing a lot of training. We do at least one or two training courses a month at TAC uh, in our space, and we do them webcast as well. They're anywhere from three hours to a week long, depending on what you do, uh, what, what you want out of it. Um, I've listed a couple of the different kinds of courses up here, MPI and OpenMP, debugging, Xeon Phi optimization, that's one of our big ones we do almost every month, or we have been, um, Python and R. We've done introduction to scientific visualization. We did scientific computing for biologists, because frequently biologists are not so necessarily good at scientific computing. Um, so we try to teach them the new languages and, and help them collaborate with computational engineers so they understand what they're doing. Um, all of our training is listed on our web portal. A lot of it is webcast, so you can sit in your office or at home and, and go through it. A lot of the materials are also available on the website, so you can download them and go through them yourself. We do have every summer a weekly, a week-long program called the Summer Supercomputing Institute. We basically start from MPI and OpenMP all the way through debugging and profiling and optimization and visualization. And so um, you spend a week at TAC, and it's a very reasonable, very small registration fee, although it's going up a little bit because food is getting more expensive. Um, but it's, you get one-on-one -on -one meetings with the staff. You learn how to do the visualization. Um, you come out with a very, very full brain at the end of the week, but it's entirely worth it. Uh, and we've had, uh, every summer since 2007, we had 40, about 40 people. And then this year, because we have a new space and we now have a director of training and educational initiatives, um, we doubled the size of it, so we're kind of excited about that. Um, we now have a nice big auditorium. For those of you who haven't seen our new beautiful building, you should come up north from, of here and visit. Um, there were two tracks this year, parallel applications and data analysis and visualization, and they were actually equally full. And so our staff in both of those areas went through and taught courses all week long in that. Um, five different countries were represented. We had 18% female participation, which was very exciting. We're all looking at raising female participation in everything we do. Um, and then coming soon from now, uh, for starting next summer, we'll have a series of week-long training events sort of modeled on the Summer Supercomputing Institute, but each one focused on a different area. So we'll have one in high-performance computing. We'll have one specifically on visualization and data analysis, on cluster design. It turns out training sysadmins, as, as my colleague said, is something that everybody wants, and you, got every, you need to start doing that as well, uh, as well as life sciences computing. We're not sure what the... Registration is going to be yet, but it will be there sometime in the summer months. Um, we promise we have good air conditioning because it is 105 outside in Austin most of the time in the summer. But you'll come back, I promise. Uh, anyway, um, so at SC16 in our booth in November, we will have information on the series. And then um, finally, um, we have had more than 1,000 people registered for training between August of last year and July of this year, so that's a, a pretty good number. Um, more than 11,000 independent views of our training events on YouTube, which is up 25% over the year before that. Um, and in person, of course, we ask them if they're satisfied, and um, they answer their surveys, 70% very satisfied, 
Um, more than 90% satisfied with the instructors, which is good because they're all our staff, so I don't know what I would do if they didn't like them. Um, uh, and would 70% would definitely recommend them to others. So you are welcome to go to the TAC website and check out all the training. You can look at all the past materials and what's upcoming. They're, they just posted today an R and Python training uh, coming up at the end of the month. And this is how you get in touch with us. And that's all I have. Questions? Okay. Oh, and by the way, for the summer, uh, for the student cluster challenge for 2016, TAC is in the mix. T uh, Munich is in the mix. Uh, there are two German teams, three Chinese teams, Taiwan, Singapore, Colombia, and six teams from the USA. But TAC's going to win. <laughs>